Use the referral link in the description to G2A.com for all of your Xbox codes, PlayStation codes and video games and be sure to use the code CHEZ at checkout to get yourself 3% cash back. Hey guys, welcome to episode 6 of season 2 here at Inter Milan. Today's the final episode before the January transfer window, so I am going to need your suggestions in the comments section down below. In fact, I have a couple of things I want to ask you about. The first is, do I or do I not start to train Albon Lafont? Obviously, uh, we bought him because he was cheap and had the potential to be a number one goalkeeper. He hasn't yet fully performed. He is growing of his own accord though, up from 81 to 83 in just the start of this season alone. Would you like me to start to train him to accelerate that growth or allow him to grow naturally and see where it takes him? Also made a change to the starting lineup as per your suggestions. Uh, Memphis Depay now starts on the left-hand side, uh, Nicola Pepe on the right, and Politano dropped to the bench. Uh, some calls for Icardi to start ahead of uh, of Martinez as well, but obviously with January around the corner, Icardi is now going to get sold. So I will leave a vote in the top right for whether I do or do not train Lafont. And in the comments section. I'd like you to very much leave me a suggestion for Mauro Icardi's replacement. Uh, I'd probably look for a high-rated first-team player and again look to drop Lautaro Martinez to the subs bench and or this reserve side. Uh, we haven't been playing Diego Godin in the starting lineup. There's some calls for Godin to maybe start. We only really made the Godin signing because it's something that's happening in real life. His stats... Whilst he's 86 rated, physically he's really not good enough. 44 sprint speed now against the better sides in uh, domestic and European competition just isn't good enough. He's dropped from 88 to 86 since the beginning of the season and De Vries is just as good, if not better, at what he does in this starting lineup. So I'm quite happy for De Vries to keep his starting spot. Um, other than that, I don't think there's anything else to touch on. Uh, you guys have been vocal and I appreciate that in your... Uh, not only su uh, suggestions, but critical in your feedback as well. I need that. As long as it's uh, written in the right way and it's just abuse, then I'm quite happy to receive your critique on the way that I'm running the side. And I appreciate that you guys are passionate enough about the series to offer your critique about the way that I'm running the side. And I have altered the way that I'm doing things thanks to your given feedback. So today we have games against Benevento. We'll just actually quickly sim this one. Then it's Udinese away, followed by a real massive game in the Champions League against Atletico Madrid, where our European future hangs in the balance. Then it's Perusa at home and Hellas Verona away. So I'll probably play Udinese, we'll play Atleti, and I'm not even sure whether I'll play Verona. I may only play two games today, but uh, we'll certainly see Benevento and Perusa and then take it from there. And to be fair, the side is probably fit enough to be able to start here. So we'll simulate the game against Benevento and hopefully, although actually, look at that. They've just beaten Juventus by a goal to nil. That will come in handy with regards to closing the gap down to Juve at the top of the table. But, oh, brilliant. Memphis Depay into the starting lineup for the first time in this full strength side and immediately injured after nine minutes. Whether he injured himself celebrating Lautaro Martinez's goal, I'm not sure. Politano's come on for him just after half time. We have got third through Serge Aurier though after Nicola Pepe gave us a 2 0 lead just after the half hour. And it's going to be a simple victory against Benevento. They might have beaten, or oh, 4 0 thanks to Bruno Fernandes. They might have beaten Juventus, but certainly they weren't able to beat us. Depies up for five weeks. Right, well, he'll miss the rest of the month then. <sighs> Back into the starting lineup will go Politano, and Pepe will switch to the left again. Well, I, I tried to do what you guys wanted me to. Unfortunately, for at least the remainder of this month, I'm not going to be able to. <laughs> Such is the way of things sometimes in career mode. Regardless, uh, he'll be fit again for the January uh, month episode tomorrow. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to get him back fighting fit for the remainder of the season. After that, we're a point behind Juventus now as we push into the next game against Udinese. Actually, I'll play the rotation side here because I want my full strength side uh, available for the game against Atleti because that's much more important right now at this stage. So uh, uh, I'll just quick auto replace there. But what I'm actually going to do, actually, I'll just make sure that you, uh, Udinese's starting lineup is as strong as it uh, it needs to be. He says as he forgets to move the thing. 
But what I'll do is I'll start my second string team. Uh, yeah, be, those kids will be fine. Those kids will be fine. So, let's do... Oh, we do it this way. If I just do that, there we go. I'll start that side. And then uh, we'll have Andy Carroll at Udinese. That I certainly didn't expect. Jefferson Fafon on the right. In the middle. Oh, certainly we can start Barak there. Um... Fofana could come in for Bekarami as well. They've got any better centre-backs? They certainly do. Starting a much weaker side than they necessarily need to. Uh, put Musso in ahead of Scuffe as well. On the left side, Yanko is a centre-mid. Can he play on the left? Not necessarily. Although he's got he's got a bit of pace there, Yanko. So we'll leave him out there. He should be okay in that, in that position. Right, okay. Oh, we're going to start with that team, as you see there. They're going to start with their... Now, strongest lineup as we've altered it. Hopefully, we can get three points again in the league. Distant. Barak in there to Fofana. Out wide Farfan. here to Jefferson Fafan. He's in some space. Nice turn, too. And we'll find a teammate. And Lafont makes a very good save. Spreading himself beautifully there in front of the striker. That was dangerous, but superb save with his legs. Just making sure that he covered as much ground as possible. As much area as possible with those legs to ensure that the... Uh, the ball didn't find its way past him. Politano will deliver this cross into the box. And it's dangerous. And it has to be headed behind by Samir at the back post. And now we're threatening at the other end to maybe take the lead. Here too. Icardi's up. We have taken the lead at this end of the field. Maro Icardi makes it into one. Udinese nil. 15 minutes in. A dominant header. Don't score many corners. But when I do, it's normally him that's on the end of the ball in. Really good header. We're in front. Gagliadini. Uh, okay. <laughs> just hopping next to the ball rather than actually taking a touch of it but never mind work it inside here to Vecino and there's a second not the most accurate of finishes but I think the keeper perhaps wasn't expecting it to be popped up straight at his face it kind of went straight down the middle of the goal there really Gallardini involved and actually gets the assist after a rather poor attempt to take a touch and yeah I think the keeper was just caught off guard to get a better angle for it yeah there we go maybe he saw it late as well coming through the defender's legs and yeah, it was kind of straight at his face. Hard to react as a keeper for those. It's 2 0 into, though, just inside the half hour. Here's Barak driving down the left hand side. Inside to Fafana, to Veghorst. Veghorst oh, into the middle, dangerous, and I won't win that header. I knew as soon as it was on its way over that Politano wasn't going to win that header, but unfortunately. Despite knowing he wasn't going to win the header, I was hoping the keeper might have been able to make a save. But it's a good header by Jefferson Farfan from about seven yards or so. Accurate into that near post. And Udinese have a goal back. Gagliardini, Rozovic. Where to go? There's so many Udinese players in the way. Trying to find a bit of space, which we do. And Akadi's shot is blocked and it trickles to Musso, the goalkeeper. It'll be 2-1 at half-time. Out there to Bauer, inside to Brozovic. Brozovic. Nice movement from Vecino. Picardi's got some Picardi. decent movement too. The strike is pretty tame. Straight at Musso. That was comfortable enough for him to be able to gather in. Would have wanted a little bit more from Mauro Icardi there. A little bit more accuracy. He's got like 91 or 92 finishing. Certainly expecting to find a corner in that situation rather than going straight down the throat of the keeper. Same here. Into Balic. Half hand with the cross. It's decent. And Veghorst is there. Ooh. That was actually more dangerous than I initially thought it was going to be. The height of Veghorst at the back post very nearly brought Udinese level in this game. It's a lovely run. Oh, and unfortunately, the pass deflected on the way through looking for Brozovic. We could have caught them on the counter from their own chance. Actually scored ourselves. Try and win this header. And Gagliardini's done nicely uh, to get up to that. Politano inside here to Brozovic. I'll try and get that through. No real need for the back heel. Just play a normal pass and it'll find its man. 20 minutes to go, still 2-1 Inter. I want to make a change, but at the same time, I want everybody to be fully fit for the game uh, against Atleti. I will bring Lautaro Martinez on just to try and stretch their back line a little bit as legs tire and bring the extra pace on through the middle up top. We'll see if it works. Here's Vecino. We'll look for Lautaro immediately. <laughs> Thankfully for Udinese fans. There's a defender in the way, otherwise he might have had the biggest of immediate impacts there. Lautaro Martinez, Brozovic will look for Lautaro again, out of his feet and blocked at source. Might fall to him again, but unfortunately can't saw his feet out quickly enough and they will keep that in. So we'll stay at just 2-1 with 15 minutes or so to go. 
Good header by Lataro. I'll hit that early down the line looking for Karamo, who's onside here. Jan Karamo, pace to get in the box and the turn. And this, oh, the pullback finds the only defender that was in the way of two teammates. Galudini in there to Brozovic. Pacino looking for Lautaro. Touch, turn. Good footwork. Lautaro Martinez shot blocks. Trickle out for a corner. Good turn of pace there from Lautaro. Brozovic with the delivery. Scored from one corner. Not going to score from another. Andy Carroll on for Vegorst for them. Galudini trying to shake away from the defender but can't do it. Foul is given though. We could whip in a decent delivery here. Politano. Got a good ball on him. And that's a very dangerous cross that unfortunately no one can get on the end of. And Hoyster wins that though. Galliardini will knock that down. Here's Caramo. Just trying to work one more opportunity before the end of the half. Lautaro Martinez driving around the pass. Sorry, it's Ficino. Oh, looking for Lautaro Martinez. And again, Udinese get a leg in the way. Defending for their lives at the back, Udinese. And one final counter-attack could see them attack for their lives and maybe get a point out of this game. Certainly want three points ourselves here away from home to close the gap yet further on Juventus and this result may well for a brief time at least put us top of the table. Thankfully Lafont saves to ensure that that does oh, remain the case. Lautaro could get in behind here. Just trying to send the defender. It's not worked. It's Politano and the runner arriving. Oh, couldn't squeeze it through but the final whistle goes anyway. Oh, it's even me. Rather electric. Final 10 minutes or so. End-to-end -end stuff. But we come away with the win. Juventus play Perugia away. You would imagine they will win that. Should be a pretty straightforward fixture for them. And I would imagine we will stay uh, a point behind them in the league. But as we push forward into the Champions League, we are two points ahead of Salzburg. And a draw might not be enough in this game against Atleti. To send us through. We might have to win against the group winners. They've already guaranteed themselves top spot. And we're desperate to follow them through in second. Politano starts on the left for me. Ahead of the still injured Memphis. And their starting lineup is pretty similar to the one that we played against earlier on in the season. Although Allen is in the midfield for Rodri. And Savic is in for Felipe. Other than that, same side we played against in the group stage earlier on in the year. Seems like we lost to in the group stage earlier on in the year. Hoping for better fortunes this time around. Needing better fortunes this time around. My name is Derek Ray, and I'm joining the commentary on this. We're there to Lantaro. Good touch and strength to hold off the attentions of the midfielder. And Nangolan's made a great run. And it's... Oh, he's not quite tall enough. If Nangolan was three inches taller, or his legs were three inches longer, he'd have toe-pucked us 1-0 in front there. Desperately unlucky not to have gotten on the end of that. Rabio will look out there to Nicola Pepe. Lovely ball to him. Left-footed as we discovered earlier on in the season. Nicola Pepe, Lautaro will look for Rabio, but can't get it to him. Good header by Ori there. Fernandez tucked back. It's Rabio again. Nicola Pepe again making the move, but not yet sure where I want this ball to go. Rabio to Lautaro to Nangolan. In there to Politano. Bit of footwork maybe to get past one defender. She does, but can't get past the midfield of Jelson Martins. Politano will throw that back. And Alex Tellez will, ooh, via Jelson Martins' back, find a teammate. Nangolan, lovely ball around the corner to Lautaro. Sat up beautifully, but he's put it wide to the target. Agonisingly close to a 1-0 lead. Hernandez. To Tomar Lamar, Saul and Lamar having swapped positions for the time being. Saul finding himself out on the left. Luke and is now back down to Lamar in a more familiar position. Jelson Martins is pushed central now. Really fluid in the, the way that their players position themselves on the field here, Atleti. But the defenders haven't positioned themselves very well. And Altaro Martinez gives us a 1 0 lead in the 33rd minute. That's what we needed. If things stay as they are, we will finish second in the group and go through to the knockout rounds of the Champions League. Lovely finish. I think might have gotten a slight hand to that, Jan Oblak. Good angle for the replay to show whether he did. Yes. Slightest of touches. Not enough to turn it around the post. Only push it into it. The ball ends up in the back of the net still. Good header by Fernandez. Taro turns well and will slot Bruno Fernandes in. It was the poor free kick that's led to Atleti, second conceding of the day. 
Yes, literally. Just what we wanted. I don't know what Jan Oblak's doing there with a free kick. He's just dinked that forward. Bruno Fernandes knocks it down. Runs forward to take on a secondary roll after he lays it off to Lautaro Martinez. And a secondary roll turns into a primary one. So he thrashes that home. And we have ourselves a 2-0 lead. 33-44. The minute marks. And we might just be going through in second place in the group. At half time, Salzburg are being held by Galatasaray to a goalless draw. So Atleti could come back and beat us here. And if the result stays as it is in Austria, we will be going through in second place in the group. But regardless of what happens in Austria, if we stay in front here against Atleti, then we certainly will be going through as second in the group. Who we could potentially have in the first knockout rounds, I'm unsure. Oh, Nicola, you've got to finish this now. Nicola Pepe in behind. He's on his favourite left foot. We'll look to finish it home. That would have been cherry on top of the cake and result assured. Unfortunately, it was a foot wide. Very for Atleti deep in our half. It's at 1-2 between Lamar and Griezmann, but we've headed it away. They've taken Allen off and brought on Rodri in his place. Saul with a little back heel there. Fooled. Oh, God. Can't get rid of that. It fooled Nangolan. Here's Diego Costa. And this time Nangolan was right there ready and waiting where he needed to be. That was dangerous. Atleti always going to be a threat throughout the entirety of 90 minutes. There's no way we can get away with switching off anywhere on the field. Griezmann out to Tom Alomar. Aurier steps in and will get to the loose ball. But in turning, gives it back to the Frenchman. Lovely turn by Lamar. And the ball comes in. Lafont with a Superman punch. And a penalty has been given. Um, I want to see a replay of that. Lafont came out and punched the ball. Skriniar's just... He's gone to try and clear it. Diego Costa's run into him. And he's given a pen. Saul going off for Thomas Partey. But Antoine Griezmann has the opportunity... Oh, and his opportunity is denied to give Atleti a route back into the game. Alwyn Lafont with the penalty save. 21 minutes to go. Jelson Martins with the delivery. Lamar can't bring that down. Thomas can out to Jelson Martins again into the middle, headed away by De Vries. Justice, as far as I'm concerned, done there with the save from Alwyn Lafont. He very well punched away. And inexplicably the referee gave a penalty but thankfully for me the Frenchman in goal denied the oh, Frenchman from the penalty spot the opportunity to bring the Spaniards back into the game it's 2-0 to the Italians Pepe so better for Fernandes so what was going on with that first touch but we managed to get it down to Nangolan here via Lautaro Martinez Teles will push forward space on the left hand side for Politano it will actually deflect soon there. I tried to pass it first time, it didn't make it, and then Teles just ran into the ball, and it's square and free to the Italian on the left-hand side, who's actually coming off momentarily for Jan Caramo, and will switch uh, Nicola Pepe from the right to the left, and bring Caramo on on that right-hand side. Big switch across here to Bayerine. Atleti seemingly quite happy to just play the ball about. Haven't been too enthusiastic about their chances in this game. Okay. Gets that Pepe. He hasn't. Luca Hernandez wins the foot race. Thomas to Griezmann. They know they're going to finish top here, Atleti. So they really have taken their foot off the gas in this game. But outside of the post from Thomas Partey, they might have had something to fight for in the final few minutes. Still 2 0, thankfully, as our woodwork is in the way. Obviously, professional football is never like to lose a game, but they know that there was nothing on the line for them here in this one, and there was something on the line for us. So, we certainly raised our game where they really didn't need to. Ravio will drive forward here, will look for Lautaro. He's got the legs in behind to seal it, maybe at three. No, wide. Outside of his right foot again. Similar type of finish to the one that scored him his goal, but on this occasion, wide of the target. I perhaps had the time there to turn his side and try and finesse it with his right foot, but finesse shots are so broken on FIFA 19 that I wasn't really confident of that happening. Regardless, we get the victory and we're through to the knockout stages of the Champions League. 
Did Galatasaray do anything against Salzburg in the final? Uh, they did. Galatasaray win. They don't end the group stage pointless. On the final day of the group stage games, they get themselves three points. It doesn't mean anything with regards to the Champions League table or their progression, at least. Our victory against Atletico sees us go through and continue on into the knockout stages of the Champions League. Not sure when the next uh, round will be drawn, actually. We've... Ah, there you go. Prize money, 27.8 million. And as such, we've matched the expectation from the board there. We're not on board with the youth thing, but who cares about that these days? Uh, Depay still injured, but we'll simulate this game at home against Perugia. And it should be a pretty straightforward victory. Although, Perugia apparently also just beat Juventus. What's happening to Juventus at the minute? Every time we simulate a game against someone, the, the team that we're about to play have just beaten Juventus. It was Benevento at the beginning of the episode. It's Perugia now. They're getting hammered by us, though. 4-0 in the 52nd minute. Two goals in the first seven minutes of the second half. Very straightforward. Ah, game. But De Vries gets himself a straight red in the... 75th minute, and we will end with 10 men, despite getting a, a solid 5-0 victory. We are top of the table now. He's going to be out for the next game. Diego Godin's unhappy with the amount of football he's playing. Well, to be fair, you're going to get a game in the next one, mate. So, uh, you may as well stick around for the time being. Obviously, I'm not going to be selling him. We brought him in at the club because that's what has happened in real life. And uh, we want to keep him here, despite the fact that he's falling in rating. Really feeling quite under the weather still, to be fair. So I'm actually going to simulate this game and uh, and end the episode there, I'm afraid. I do apologise, but I'm really feeling quite dead, to be completely honest. So I'm going to go and take some more medication and go and have a lie down and try and switch off for the rest of the day. Uh, I will make sure that you guys get the January episode tomorrow, but it may... Well, I'll aim to get it up at 3pm, but I'm going to try and sleep off as much of this as I can, and hopefully I'll be able to get... The video, record it in the morning and get it up for you uh, in due course for tomorrow at 3pm but do leave me your feedback with regards a Mauro Icardi replacement we will try and sell Mauro Icardi in January and bring in a new starting first team striker and we will have upwards of £100 million to be able to make that signing with so do let me know in the comment section of course have your say with the vote as well should I train Lafont? Or should I allow him to just grow naturally as we have done so far this season? He's already gone up by two from 81 to 83. I'll tick over into January just to see if he goes up to 84. That's where the first game in January actually is. Uh, on the uh, sixth. So we'll advance to the first. We've got Sampdoria there, as you can see a moment ago. Uh, drawn in the Coppa Nazionale now. We get victory against Hellas Verona. So... Uh, our lead at the top of the table will remain intact. Obviously going for back-to-back -back Serie A titles here, but the Champions League takes main focus. We do have Juventus in the month of January, and the Champions League has been drawn, and we have Lyon, which is certainly a winnable fixture. Most certainly a winnable fixture. Um, any bids here we want to think about? No actual bids have come in there. Suspension is over. Player back from injury. Memphis is back. Greco wants to leave. So we shall have to call him up from the youth squad. Maricardi wants to leave. We're selling him, of course. Uruguay International Management. I shall reject that. And their youth squad monthly report. It was Greco, wasn't it? The wanted to get promoted at 71 rated now, Greco. Really nice growth from him. 65 for Ferrari. 64 for Marco Romano. The finishing is now 63. And it was 54 at the beginning of the season. So I'm really pleased with how his stats are growing. Physically, though, still needs to improve. Russo looking decent. Schultz, the six foot six left back, not growing amazingly well. Falker still not growing too well either. Uh, Petkovic, 83 to 89 for him. I'm going to let Petkovic go. Then let Falker go as well, I think. Uh, and Brankovic, 88 to 94. He's growing really nicely. We'll continue to keep his training going. Right, has Albert Lafont got up another rating? He has. He's 84 now. Abel Lafont still continues to grow. So 84 rated now. Do we... Oh, Diego Godin continues to drop in rating, annoyingly. Politano's up to 85. That's just happened as well. Any other changes? Now, Golan down to 84 from 85. So he's starting to drop in rating now. But 
as the cover star and our Night King, he certainly will stay. But Mario Cardi will be leaving in this month of January. Who do I replace him with? Let me know in the comment section down below. Vote about what I should do with regards to Albert Lafont's training. And I will act upon that for the next episode. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.